The uh, spacecraft is now heading for Africa. Uh, astronaut Crippen told Houston just a moment or two ago, he said, I'm sorry, I could not see Gibraltar. I was too darn busy. Uh, he may get another chance to see quite a lot. Just got to go from Houston for OMS-2, which is the orbital maneuvering system that will put them into their final orbit. That should be coming up in about oh, 24 minutes or so. If everything continues to go as well as it is. And Jim Cummins has a report for us uh, from here at the Kennedy Space Center. John, at the moment the rockets fired, there was a collective gasp out here among the crowd. And exactly five minutes later, loud applause once they knew the astronauts were safely on their way. I'm standing here with Gordon Brown and his wife, Hilda. Mr. Brown has worked on the shuttle project over the years and has seen many launches. How did this one compare to all the others you've seen? Oh, this was fantastic in comparison to any of the others. Uh, we were all waiting very expectantly, and uh, it, it just went beautifully. We hope the rest of the mission goes as well as, as the launch. How was it different from the, from the others you've seen? Well, uh, it's, you know, it's just more anticipation. You have a manned launch situation here, and... Uh, and you, you're, you're very anxious that, you know, the, the astronauts are safe in there and uh, everything goes well. And, and you have solid rockets. It's, it's an all-new configuration that we're dealing with here. And uh, I thought it went real well. How about you, Mrs. Brown? You got a big I, smile. I was so excited. You know, we have a beautiful spot here. We, I took uh, some pictures. I hope my camera take it pretty well. <laughs> we had a beautiful spot indeed. Uh, one NASA official said from this spot, even though we're farther away from the, the launch site than other viewing spots, we had the best profile of the launch. And it was spectacular. And all we're hearing around here are superlatives. John? Well, thank you. you all you're hearing from us in here is superlatives. Uh, Joe, have you seen anything that isn't going the way it was supposed to go? I expected three or four malfunctions during launch, just as a uh, as a matter of statistics. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get any. We had a couple of sensors in the uh, in the Ohm's fuel tanks. Yeah. Uh, that was it. It's been totally normal. Well, I wish we could have been along. Yeah, I highly recommend it. <laughs> that's Crippen, isn't it? Yep, that's Crippen, the new veteran. Right. He's uh, first space uh, flight, and as Joe Show Crippen said just a moment ago, he's no longer a rookie. Three minutes uh, mission elapsed time. Columbia, we're 20 seconds from LOS. We'd like uh, the uh, flash evaporator uh, heater feed line uh, system Bravo to 2. Yeah, sorry about that. And we're 13 seconds from LOS. Configure LOS. We'll see you at Indy at uh, 36 plus 00. zero. That L LOS means loss of signal. They're le leaving one area where they can be heard and heading for another. The flash evaporator is very important because that's the cooling system that's working there now, and that thing heats up. If you think you have trouble with your car, there are all the systems going on a hot summer day. Imagine what they're going through up there. Later on, we'll be talking about this. They're going to open up the cargo doors, and they've got some uh, evaporators in there as well, radiators, that throw all the, the radiators throw all the heat out into space, and that'll be the ne next big dramatic thing after they hit orbit with the OMS-2 that will come in, in about an hour and 10 minutes or so. And now. we will show you that on television. Because we expect to get live television pictures at that time. We'll be back with more coverage after this. NBC's coverage of the first space shuttle will continue in a moment. Minus 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four. We've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. Engine start. Engine start. America's first space shuttle, and the shuttle has cleared the tower. about the shuttle is that it sort of jumps off the pad as opposed to the uh, Apollo launches that we saw that went up very slowly and sort of majestically and right. gracefully. This thing popped right in the air. The thrust to weight ratio is, is, is higher with 7 million pounds of thrust and only 4.5 million of weight. It just leaps up. Yeah. This is a drag racer. It can be great in a quarter mile, I'll tell you, to have that one. <laughs> you can win all sorts of dollar bills. <laughs> Now, later this morning, and let's talk about that for a moment, in about an hour and five minutes, uh, they are going to open the 
the hatch on let's call it that the hatch on the back of the of the of Columbia uh, a very important maneuver because if that doesn't work they're going to have to come back uh, but that's the cargo hold and they're going to open that up and it does a number of things we'll be back on the air for that we're about to go off now but we'll be back on the air for that in the at Eastern Standard Time at about 835 there will be television pictures of part of that from space and uh, that is an important maneuver, isn't it, Joe? That's extremely important. The, They'd have uh, to abort if they didn't uh, get those open. If they don't open the doors, they don't get the cooling. And if there's anything wrong with the doors, they won't open them. Okay, well, we'll be back to show you and describe all that for you at about 8.35 Eastern Time this morning. NBC News continues its coverage of the Columbia Space Shuttle. This special report has been produced by NBC News. Columbia now has two engine rotor capability. Mark. Three minutes. 32 minutes and 45 seconds or so ago. And we're going to have a replay of that. Uh, uh, we're going to have a replay of the, uh, of the launch in the event that you missed it. And even if you didn't see it, if you didn't miss it, I'm sure you'd like to see it again. What, uh, what is the sensation as you realize that you are committed? Well, the first thing that happens before you even feel any movement at all is that there's a tremendous shake in, uh, I'm comparing, of course, to Saturn V, tremendous shake in, in, in a noise that you perhaps feel as much as you hear. And then, of course, once those solid rockets light off, you can, this, this moves so quickly off the pad that I'm sure they felt a, a quick g-force or a quick acceleration as they left the pad, which we did not really feel uh, with the Saturn V. Now, as we talked about, uh, there's probably a great deal of noise because the solids are noisy. We could hear that on the ground. They can also hear and feel that inside the spacecraft. There's a lot of rumbling. Uh, uh, John Young one, once called uh, staging. That's when the first stage of the Saturn V uh, separates from the second stage, the great train wreck. Well, I'm sure when, uh, when these two solid boosters shut down and separated, it was his second great train wreck that he's been in. Well, as you watch it on the television, you know, it, it certainly is a majestic uh, rise into the heavens, but actually it's a leap towards, a lunge towards space, isn't it, with it's, these solid uh, rocket boosters? I think we've uh, characterized that, uh, that giant leap for mankind uh, with this flight. It, it does leap for the heavens. It's, it's anxious to go, and, uh, and once you, uh, you get it uh, motivated like the crew, there's nothing holding it back, as we saw today. In the simulator, at least, it really is a pulsating smashing uh, rise uh, caused by the burning characteristics of the solids. Well, you know, uh, Frank, pilots have a, have, a, have a characteristic of treating uh, uh, the airplanes they fly, vehicles like the space shuttle, like, like a human being, like, uh, like a woman in a sense. We call them she's and, yeah. and try and take care of them and, uh, and treat them right, they treat you right. And I, this vehicle, particularly one that will fly over and over and over again, will develop a personality, will develop a character. And uh, John and Crip are finding out a little bit about what being married to this space shuttle for the entire astronaut crew is going to be all about. Well, they've got 54 and a half hours of uh, total time inside there. Actually, a little more than that if you consider the time that they spent before the launch today. Uh, but the next really spectacular sight, apart from the television that we're going to see from, the, uh, uh, from uh, Earth orbit when they open the uh, cargo bay doors, and that will happen uh, before too long, early this morning, uh, will be the landing out at uh, Edwards Air Force Base when it comes down almost just like a rock is about the only way you can describe it and then flares out over the uh, dry lake bed uh, at, uh, in the Mojave Desert and comes down to a pretty, pretty fast landing and that too is going to be a spectacular well, That should be Sunday or Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. The astronauts who uh, landed at Frank call it the brick glider. Well, there's no engines, remember, on this airplane, so just like the launch, you only get one chance to land. You can't take it around like an airplane could. You have to do it right the first time. And, uh, and we're getting an uh, acquisition of signal once again now. This is uh, Mission Control in Houston. See, the astronauts have uh, already crossed the continent uh, of Africa. And they are in darkness at this time. They are, yes. They should be in darkness at this time, and they are... They are Roger, Columbia, read you loud and clear. Oh, here we go, here we go. And they are... Roger, and uh, I have your Ohm's uh, pad for your Ohm's 2 burn when you're ready to copy. 
what, over Ethiopia right now. What they're doing is giving them the updated information of, based upon the radar tracking of their orbit, which might change the energy they put in uh, at the high point of the orbit just slightly. Roger, for your cue cards, uh, cross the cube. All right, they are going to exchange a highly technical information back and forth for a time between uh, Mission Control and Houston.